Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we have something a little different on yeah. a review. So we're gonna do the Emacs Tiny Hawk S, which is the new one from uh, Emacs. Mm -hmm. um, we're just gonna go over some basic stuff as far as the binding, a couple of things we found, and just kind of a little uh, notice for people that might miss it when they get the, right. the product. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to run properly the 1S battery and a 2S battery. Yeah, I set the profile through either OSD or through the computer. And then we're gonna show you how to bind it in D, 16 or D8 mode. All right, for everything we talked about in the video, the links will be in the description below. And just like always, if you think this video gives you value, give that thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, Grayson Hobby is a shop located outside of Atlanta, Georgia, where we sell and ship out quads and airplanes and drill parts and everything of sort. Everything you see on our website, is located here in our good old USA warehouse right outside of Atlanta. <laughs> All right guys, so what we have here is the Emacs Tiny Hawk S. This is the new version from Tiny uh, Emacs. It is a two cell compatible uh, Tiny Hawk. For everybody that's familiar with the original Tiny Hawk, this was a one cell only job. Really nice quad, but a lot of people are like, oh, I wish it was two cell, I wish it was two cell because of the other ones on the market. Well, let's get this out of the way. First things first, you'll notice it's a black body instead of white. They did that just so you can visually know it's a different version. Props are now the four blade, which was the turtle mode props. So now they now have four blade props. On the outside, the motors are actually smaller, believe it or not. They're 0802s, not 08025s. Uh, so they're a, a hair shorter. Is that because of the 2S? Uh, well, it's the thing is, it's also a higher KV. It's a 15,500 KV versus 15,000 KV. So I think, according to their advertisement, they just have more powerful, more efficient motors designed. So these are just a completely upgraded motor. They're actually a hair lighter. Okay. Um, so I think they did that for weight, etc. Flight controller now takes one cell or two cell. It still uses the same connector. So you will need a battery with that style connector. Flight controller also on this particular one, which is really cool, the original version one, the original Tiny Hawk was only D8 mode. Now, for anyone that's been around in the news, you'll know like the newer radios from FreeSky, like the X9 Lite, does not support D8 mode. That renders this quad useless, right? No, it does have D16 mode capability. However, this is a one of those integrated receivers, and a lot of people have noted dropouts and random things in various other models with running the D16 capable mode. You have the ability to run D8, absolutely run D8, it's probably recommended, um, but don't hesitate to try D16 and fly it around, see if it works for you. Um, if all you have is X9 light and all that, uh, just run it with telemetry off in D16 mode. You will have to go into the computer and change the settings, and we'll show you that later. The other thing you'll notice in the quad box, and there's only like a $10 difference in these quads from the version, the original one to the new one. You only got one battery with the original one. You actually get a single two cell LiPo, which is a 300 milliamp two cell. And you also get a single um, 450 milliamp one cell. So you get two batteries with the Tiny Hawk. F. Battery hold down is actually rubber bands now, which I really like that. It, it's really nice because the plastic, eventually these things crack on the original one and you have to replace it. Also it doubles the fact that you can run the two cell. Gives you a little bit of uh, maneuverability if you find other batteries, aftermarket batteries, etc. What's in the box was also interesting too. The original Tiny Hawk did not come with extra props, which I was kind of confused, especially when, since they went to a unique design. Um, it's really nice that they listened and went to an extra set of props, so it comes with an extra set of four blade. They do not have the three blade props anymore. Um, you can still get those and use them, but it doesn't come with them. I thought it was gonna actually be one set and one set, but it's not, it's, and you get some stickers there. Battery charger on this one. Now this is only a three bay charger. The original had a, a six bay, um, small or large connector well this one because it supports two cell and one cell is three two cell and three one cell it also has a little dip switch here that switch from high voltage and standard so if you're running regular lipos you can go to standard if you're running high voltage you can switch to that it also comes with a little screwdriver for the motors it comes with extra bands for the battery strap extra screws for the frame extra battery lead because these do tend to wear out over time by the way this is a really nice little case it comes with just like the original tiny hawk so because this is a one cell and a two cell quad and it performs completely drastically different in uh, two cell versus one cell. It did run two different profiles for the PIDs. So if PIDs. you're running profile one for the PIDs, um, that's for one cell. Profile two is for two cell lipos. It does come shipped with the second profile on it. Not that it won't fly one cell with that. Uh, it'll fly poorly um, the, given the PIDs are adjusted for that. Um, also, if you try to run the one cell PIDs on a two cell, it's going to create excess oscillation and I'll probably lose control. Uh, might not fly away, but probably just drop out of the sky or shake to death. 
Um, this is the same problem we have with other quads. Yeah, when you go from three cell, four yeah. cell, etc. But this is because these are such high KV motors and such a small quad with a lot of, no weight to it. By the way, the version two is 30 grams. The version one is 27 point. Uh, five. So you're talking a two and a half grams difference for the ability to go two cell. Granted, with the battery on it, it's going to weigh more, but that's just that little bit of extra meat um, weight and to make it fly just that much more stable. Um, so I think that's a huge improvement. I think two cell is great because the quad actually flew decent outside, but it wasn't amazing. I think with the two cell on it, it's actually going to handle pretty well, similar like the Mobulus. Set. I have gone through beta flight and I have set up the menus. You probably will need to do that. They do have a basic setup on it, um, but in order to buy in the quad, you're going to plug in your battery. And if you go on the bottom side, uh, on the front left motor underneath, there's a button under there. And if you got fingernails or anything like that, you can push it. But it basically, you push and hold the button. For, well, wait, what if you don't have fingernails? Uh, you can use something to get in there that's not metal. All right. But I, even with no fingernail there, I'm getting my fat thumb in there. I'm just kind of going in there and click, and you'll feel the click to it. Push and hold the button for two seconds, and it goes into a bind mode. Now you're in bind mode. So I'm going to put it in bind. And I got it to bind. So now my radio is bound. It is binding after power up. So it's not like a traditional free sky receiver where you hold the button and power it up. It's after it's powered up and you hold it for two seconds to go into a bind mode. And that is true for either the D8 or D16. If you go to D16, you do have to change the settings in beta flight. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I wanna show you guys through OSD. So if you're not comfortable setting up kind of thing, uh, or changing the profiles, you don't have to connect it to beta flight every time to change the settings. So this is to go from 2S basically to 1S. Yes. So let's plug in a battery here, and I'm going to go ahead and find the channel. I'm going to search. All right, so we got a channel here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and put the cover over this just so you guys can see the menu, but normally you'd have the video in the background. When you first plug in the battery, it tells you menu, throttle mid, yaw left, pitch up. So throttle mid, yaw left, pitch up. Yaw stick over, and then we're going to go to... Profile, select it, PID profile, and you'll see it's on two right now. Wait, oh, PID, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so all you gotta do is three is not set anything, two and one, so I'm gonna fly a one cell LiPo on this, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna go over, and then I'm gonna go save and reboot. And now, and we're gonna verify just to show you guys, I'm gonna go back into the menu and show you. See, profile one. So now you can fly on profile one, you can yeah. fly so one you, cell. If you want to switch between batteries, it's not, you're not going to like, oh crap, I have to go back to the computer to set it. You can do it right there on your on screen display through the OSD menus for beta flight. Now, if you do want to run D16 mode, let's go to the computer and show you. All right, guys, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bind this in D16 mode. I'm going to set my radio D16 mode, not D8. We're gonna plug it in. This is your first time connecting the quad to the beta flight. It might take a minute to install drivers. Usually something pops up, it's loading in the corner. Just let it do what it's gotta do. It might take a couple minutes, depending on your computer. Once the COM port pops up, it usually says something's ready to use or your COM port's popped up. Click there. We're gonna go to configuration tab. I'm gonna scroll down here and you'll see this is a Matec 411 receiver and it's running, this is running beta flight 4.0.0. We're gonna scroll down on the configuration tab to receiver. And you'll see it's SPI RX support is the type of receiver that's in it. That's the integrated receiver. It comes in D8 mode. Now, if I wanna run D16, FR Sky X is what I'm gonna select. I'm gonna save and reboot. No other changes are made. So we're gonna push, there's a button on the bottom underneath the camera area, the front left motor. We're gonna push and hold that button for two seconds. We're gonna go into a bind mode. The LED will change, it'll go solid, and then the uh, red light will flash. Bind. Telemetry off. Telemetry lost. And now it's flashing. So you can see it down in the, the blue light flashing that's bound. And telemetry recovered. See, if you have an SD card in your radio, you can hear it say telemetry recovered. That's a good sign. And we got D16 mode. Let's see, D16 mode running on this. Now that was not supported in the old one. So that's pretty cool um, for those of you that have D16 only on the newer radios. So D16 mode works. Telemetry Proven. Lost does yes so they don't really talk about it in the manual which is kind of interesting they say it but they don't really talk about it so what about the profiles from 1s to 2s as far as the profiles go if just so you see it um profile one is the one cell you can see those are at like 100 profile two you can see them 80 so it's definitely okay. reduced for, so it is different Let's see if profile three is anything profile three is just standard default 
they to fly gonna fly like crap on either one. Okay. Have it. There you have the Tiny Hawk S in a nice little case. Yes. What he said. Oh, did I catch? Very important to go to profile two when you're running two S, right? Yes. And very important to go to profile one you're running you're running. What S? One. It will fly on one S on the profile one on two S, but it won't fly very good, right? Yes. <laughs> if Sorry, you, I didn't think about it. If you cross the streams, it won't yeah. fly. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's yeah. a new product from Emacs. We're done.